Now, what is what are the circuit diagrams? Now, in the circuit diagrams, what you have is you make use of the circuit symbols. Now, these are the circuit symbols which are there in your syllabus, and you should be able to know how to draw them. And if the circuit symbol is given to you, you should be able to spot what it is for. So if there is a circle and a line, that's an open switch. When you join that, that's a closed switch. One big dash and a small dash is a cell. And when you have more than two dashes like this, that becomes a battery. A diode is a device that conducts electricity only in one direction as it has a high resistance in the reverse direction. So you show it with a circle and a triangle and a bar on the top. Resistor is a normal block. When on the resistor, you have this arrow going, that becomes a variable resistor. And when on the resistor, you have something like a graph going up, that's a thermistor. Thermistor is that resistor whose resistance depends on temperature. Variable resistor is that resistor whose resistance keeps on changing. A circle and this across is a bulb. A fuse is a device which breaks the circuit when a current greater than the threshold is passed onto it. So it's a box with a line in the middle. Then if on a resistor you draw arrows coming down, that's a light dependent resistor whose resistance depends on light. A circle and an A is an ammeter, which is a device that is used to measure the current in a circuit. And V is a voltmeter that is used to measure the potential difference in a circuit. And then if you put a triangle and an arrow going up, that is a light emitting diode. Okay, so I hope these circuit symbols are clear to you. And in physics, to draw the circuit diagrams, we make use of the circuit symbol. So let's take one example. So you need to draw a circuit diagram with a battery, bulb and a switch. And for this circuit, you need to measure a current and a potential difference. So I hope you remember for the current, we use a device called ammeter. And you need to remember that ammeter is always connected in next to the battery or the bulb. That is, it is always connected in series and voltmeter will be connected parallel uh, to the bulb. So what we will do is this is the switch, then this is the battery, then this is a bulb, the voltmeter is connected in parallel and ammeter is connected next to it in this series. Okay, so I hope this diagram is crystal clear to you and always remember ammeter in series and voltmeter in parallel. That is very, very important. Now let us look at the very important di uh, triangles or the formulas that you need to remember. Time, the unit of current is amperes, charges in coulombs, times is in second. So one ampere is one coulomb per second. So current is a rate of flow of charge measured in amperes. One ampere is a current flowing when one coulomb of the charge flows to one second. The second is the voltage, uh, the resistance, sorry. Resistance is voltage divided by current. So resistance is the obstruction to the flow of current, which is measured in ohms. And the last definition is potential difference, which most of the students forget. So please make sure you remember that. Potential difference is work done per unit charge. So potential difference is measured in volts, work done is measured in joules, and charge is measured in coulombs. So one volt is one joule per coulomb. So one volt is a potential difference when one joule of energy is transferred per coulomb of charge. Okay? So I hope this definitions of current potential difference and resistance is clear to you. Now let us look at a few questions that can be asked related to these triangle. First is calculate the current flowing when four coulombs of charge flows for two minutes. Now you need to take care of the units. The units have to be in seconds. So current is charge over time, charge is four coulombs, times is two minutes, so times by 60 is 120 seconds, so the answer would be 0 0.033 amps. Calculate the energy transfer when two volts of potential difference create a charge of two coulomb. So energy is voltage per unit voltage times the charge. Our voltage is two the charge is two coulombs so the answer is four joules next is you need to calculate the resistance when potential difference is four and current is two so v over i gives two ohms next is charge when five amp current flows for five minutes again we need to convert five minutes into seconds and charge is current times time so that becomes five times five times 60 which is 1500 coulombs and then calculate the potential difference when 10 joule of work is done to move the charge of five coulomb so remember i told you potential difference is energy per unit charge energy is 10 joule charge is five coulomb so that is two volts okay so i hope these examples how you need to use these triangles is crystal clear to you. Make sure you remember the triangles along with the units, okay?
All right. Now, this is a very important part. You need to draw voltage time current of any conductor or a resistor, a filament lamp and a diode. OK, now when we talk about a conductor in a conductor, as the voltage increases, the current increases, there's a linear relationship. OK, provided the temperature has to remain constant. And this is also known as Ohm's law. Now, for the filament lamp, it shows a linear relationship at the start but after that with further increase in voltage the graph curves up like this okay so as the voltage increases the current increases at the start but after the bulb gets heated an increase in temperature increases the resistance so the current do not increase as much with the increase in voltage and the graph curves so at this point there's an increase in temperature increasing the resistance making the graph curve as opposed to a conductor where there's a linear relationship okay so i hope you are clear with this shape and how you need to explain this shape Next is a diode. Remember, diode conducts electricity in one direction. So there's a flat line in the reverse direction. And diode needs a certain threshold voltage. And then it starts to conduct the current. So this point is your threshold voltage. So diode conducts electricity in one direction. In reverse direction, the resistance is too high, so no current flows. When it reaches a threshold voltage, the current starts to increase, and then it becomes a linear relationship. Okay, so I hope these voltage time voltage current graphs are clear to you. You should be able to sketch them in the exam and explain these shapes. Okay, so now we need to do a series circuit and a parallel circuit. In the series, the resistance are connected next to each other. In a parallel circuit, they connected parallel. The total resistance in a series circuit is the sum of the individual resistance, which is greater than the individual resistance. So R1 plus R2 is R total. The current across each component will be V over R. So total voltage over the total resistance, which is the sum of R1 plus R2, gives the current in across the each component. And remember, in series, the current is always the same. So now you got the current by this formula. You can do I times R1 for the voltage across R1 and I times R2 for the voltage across R2. And that will give you the voltage across each component because the voltage gets divided according to the resistance. Now, in a parallel circuit, the total resistance is less than the individual. And the formula is R1, R2 divided by R1 plus R2. The voltage will remain constant across each. So the current will get divided and current will be the total voltage divided by R1. The current across two is the voltage across R2. OK, I hope these formulas are clear to you. Remember, in a series, the current is same in the parallel. The potential difference is same. Now, let's take an example. So these two uh, resistance are given to you, 5 and 10 ohms with 20 volts. It's a series circuit. It's a parallel circuit. So total resistance in case one will be 15 ohms, the sum of this. The voltage is 20 volts. So the current flowing across each component will be voltage over resistance so 20 over 15 is 1.33 so we have 1.33 amps flowing across each resistor now we know potential is current time resistance so we'll do 1.33 times the resistance of each and we'll find the current flowing across each okay so that is six point uh, the voltage across each so that is 6.7 and 13.3 now in a parallel circuit the total resistance is r1 r2 over r1 plus r2 that gives us 3.33 the total current is total voltage divided by total resistance resistance which is 6 amps so 6 amps is the total current the voltage will be 20 volts across each component so we have the voltage and the resistance across each so current is voltage over the resistance so 20 over 5 is the 4 amps across the current across 5 ohms and across 10 ohms it is 2 and we'll add them that will add up to the total current of 6 amp okay so i hope how you do the calculation with series and parallel circuits is clear to you next is the uk's main supply if you talk about the uk's main supply you need to remember there's a 230 voltage and the frequency is 50 hertz this is a three pin plug which we see in all our home socket you need to know the components of each okay so can you see that three wires one is blue in color one is greenish yellow one is brown color the brown color wire is a live wire where the main current flows and the fuse is connected just to the live wire because if the current exceeds a threshold in the live wire, it breaks the circuit. Then you can see to the other side, to the left side goes a blue wire that is neutral wire in which no current flows and to a top pin, 
there's a greenish yellow wire and this is the earth wire which earth is the electric current and then there's a cable grip which is made up of an insulated material called plastic and it keeps all the wires in place and prevent them from touching all the pins are made up of uh brass and you need to remember that they're made up of brass as it's a good conductor and being an alloy it's resistant to corrosion so rather than making the pins for copper we make it for brass on the other hand the wires are made up of copper as they are good conductors of electricity so you should be able to label all these wires remember the colors and the function of each wire now, there's another important triangle called power. Power is measured in watts, which is energy per unit time. And when we talk about electrical power, that can be measured by either voltage times current, and V can be written as IR according to the resistance triangle. So another formula would be current square times R, or I can be written as V over R. So another formula is P equals V square over R. Okay, so you need to remember all these three formulas. And in the exam, they can give you either voltage or current or resistance and current and ask you to find the power let's take an example you have to calculate the current produced by 200 volt bulb if generates a voltage of 10 volts okay so what is the formula of power power is current times voltage so what is our power our power is 200 watts our current we have to find so we divided by voltage so the power will be 20 watts next is what is the best fuse for this appliance now what is is the current that is flowing in this the current is flowing is 20 amps so the fuse should be greater than that so 23 amps will be the useful fuse for this okay next is there are two types of current direct and electric current direct current flows in one direction you can see the graph is just a straight line it is a current in cells and batteries the alternating current the current switches on the direction and this is what is there in the main supply now what is a national grid a national grid is a network of tables and transformers that transmits electricity from a power station to homes and building so this is a generating station and you can see that we have used a step up transformer to increase the voltage to a very high level why because at a very high voltage the current reduces and the current has a lot of heating effects and that re results in the loss of energy so when you increase the voltage you reduces the current and that prevents the loss loss of energy due to heating effect of current but as soon as it needs to go to the customer or to the homes or the offices we use a step down transformers that decreases the voltage to 230 volts is that what we require so you should know why we use the step up transformer and step down transformer where do we use it and what is the function of this okay so now let's do the last point what is a static electricity electricity that is produced by rubbing because when we rub two objects there's a transfer of electrons from one surface to another the surface that loses an electron it becomes positively charged and the surface that gains an electron becomes a negatively charged okay and there's an electrostatic attraction if both charges are same and there's a repulsion if the charges are different so you can see here these are two positive they are repelling each other and if there's a negative and a positive they are attracting each other so like charges repel and unlike charges attract each other okay so i hope you know how the static electricity is produced now electric field is a line which always travels from positive to negative across any charge object there is a certain area where you can feel the force of the electricity and that is known as an electric field you should be able to draw these fields of lines if there's a positive charge they'll be directing away from positive and directing towards the negative and they always flows from positive to negative okay I hope this topic is clear to you. Now let us look at what are the key terms we saw in this topic. What's a current, charge, thermistor, resistor, cell and a battery, variable resistor, thermistor, diode, ammeter, voltmeter, potential difference, resistance, direct current, alternating current, live wire, earth wire, neutral wire, fuse, power and efficiency. You can pause this video, have a go over these key terms okay and then come back and check the answers all these key terms definitions you can find on my website the link is mentioned in the description box below now it's the time to test yourself okay so pause your video and try these questions you need to sketch and explain the voltage on the current graph of a resistor filament lamp and a diode what are the components of a three pin club what is the voltage and frequency of UK main supply and how do you calculate the efficiency of an appliance all right pause the video have a go 
and let's check your answers now. So this is a voltage current graph, linear relationship for a conductor, filament lamp, it will be curving, diode will be a straight line, and then it will be going up, okay? And you should be able to explain it as here there's an increase in temperature increasing the resistance, diode conduct electricity only in one direction, and after the threshold is reached. Next is the main electricity. These are the components, earth wire, live wire, neutral wire, and fuse, and you should know the color and the function. And the UK main supply is 230 volts and 50. So first of all, what is a magnet? Now, a magnet is something which can attract. And the magnet has two poles, north and the south poles. And magnets are classified into two categories, permanent magnets that do not lose their magnetism, example, bar magnets. Temporary magnets can be magnetized and demagnetized, example, iron and steel. Now, around a magnet, there is a specific area where we can feel the magnetic force. And that area is the magnetic field. Now, across a bar magnet, you should be able to draw a magnetic field across a solenoid and across a current carrying conductor. Now, if there is a bar magnet, it has two poles north to south and field line starts from the north and go towards south. So you'll be drawing the circles and making the arrows from north to south. For a current carrying conductor, you'll be applying the Fleming's right hand thumb roll. Now, the thumb, if they point in the direction of the current, then the fingers will give you the direction of the magnetic field. So if the current is going upwards, see your fingers directions of the right hand, it is going and then anti-clockwise. On the other hand, if the current is down, magnetic fields of line will be going clockwise. So field lines are according to the right hand thumb roll, thumb points in the direction of the current, and the finger gives the magnetic fields of line. If the current is upwards, the magnetic field is anti-clockwise. If the current is downwards, the magnetic field line is clockwise. Now for a solenoid, what is a solenoid? It's a coil of wire. Now inside the solenoid, the field lines are straight and then it forms a loop outside. The solenoid also has a north pole and a south pole. The north pole is where the current is anti-clockwise and south pole is where current is clockwise. Now you should be able to draw these magnetic fields of line in the exams. Now next is what is an electromagnet? Now electromagnet is something like this. It is a solenoid that is a coil of wire which is wound around an iron core. Now when you pass a current through the solenoid, then the iron core become magnetized. And you can use this magnetism of the inside core in the scrapyard crane, in the circuit breakers, in the electric bell, and in the relays. Now let's see that, how this works. In an electric bell, you can see that there is a solenoid which is wrapped around an iron core, okay? And then there's an ammeter. Now, when we pass the current, this solenoid, the iron core become magnetized and it attracts the emitter towards itself. As the emitter is attracted, it rings the bell. So when the switch is closed, the current flows through the electromagnet, the iron core will become magnetized and will attract the emitter, which will ring the bell. The same thing works in the scrapyard crane. It has an electromagnet which is magnetized and then it attracts the scrap. And when it is demagnetized, it leaves the scrap. In the circuit breakers, it is an electromagnet which is magnetized with a large flow of current and it attracts the switch towards itself, turning off the current. Now let's see how a relay works. A relay is a device where a small amount of current will move the current in the electromagnet and it will make this core magnetize. As the core will get magnetized, the iron emitter will be attracted towards this electromagnet and the switch cap will be closed. As the switch cap will be closed, the current will flow through the motor. So a small amount of current in the device will give a greater current. So again, the electromagnet attracts the emitter, emitter closes the switch cap so that the current flows and 
it switches on the motor. Okay, so you should be able to define the electromagnet for the exam and the various applications of the electromagnet. Now let's see a very important concept, what is motor effect? Now motor effect says that when you place a current carrying wire in a magnetic field, it experiences a force. The force can be increased by increasing the current, taking a stronger magnet, and placing the coil perpendicular to the magnetic field. Now let's see how we find out how much will be the force and what will be the direction of the force. Now for the direction of the force, we'll be using the Fleming's left hand rule, where first finger will point in the direction of magnetic field, the center finger will give the direction of the current, and then the thumb will give the direction of the force. And the value of the force can be calculated numerically by using the formula BIL where F is the force on the conductor, which is given in Newtons, B is the magnetic flux density, which is given in Tesla, I is the current flowing through the conductor, and L is the length of the conductor. Now let's see how the setup of the motor works. Now look in this figure. We have a tube magnet, north and the south, and you know that the magnetic field is from north to south. Now since the magnetic field is north to south, then the field lines will be this way. Now you have placed a coil here, and the coil is connected to the splintering commutators, which have the metal or the graphite brushes, and the current passes through it. And the current is flowing upwards in this part of the coil, and downwards in this part of the coil. Now let us see the Fleming's left hand rule and let us concentrate on this part. If you see this, this part, my magnetic field of line is left to right. The current is moving upwards. So my center finger will go upwards. What I will see, I will see that the current is going downwards, that this force is going downwards. As the force is going downwards, this part of the coil will move down. Let's see the Fleming's left hand rule on the other part of the coil. On this part, my current, that is the center finger, is downwards. The magnetic field is left to right. So my thumb is pointing upwards. So this part is going upwards. As a result, my motor, the coil will flip from here to here and here to here. Now, as the coil flips, after the half a turn, the split ring commutator will reverse the current. So the part of the coil which is moving downwards now move upwards and the one which is moving downwards now move upwards. And then the cycle repeats and the coil keeps on rotating. And this is what is a principle of an electric motor. So see Fleming left hand roll. Use this first finger, center finger and the thumb and find the direction of the force. The other side will be on the opposite side. So there's a flipping. After half a turn, again, to and fro, and the cycle continues. So what's the function of the split ring coming data to reverse the current after heat's eat off cycle? Okay, so this is the principle of the motor effect. Make sure you are able to draw this, explain where the motor and the coil will rotate using the Fleming's left hand rule. Now let us see what is a generator effect. Up till now we have seen if you have a current, you can generate a magnetic field. If you have the magnetic field and the current, you can take the force. Now what we will be doing, we will be using the magnet and producing the current. This is a generator effect. Generator effect says that when a magnet is moved inside and outside of the wire, it produces a current in the wire due to the electromagnetic induction. And how we can see that, we can take a coil of the magnet, a coil of wire, and move the magnet in and out. As the magnet will move in and out, it will cut the magnetic fields of line. And as it cuts the magnetic fields of line, we will see the deflection in the galvanometer. And if we reverse the direction of the magnet moving in and out, the deflection will be in the opposite one. So if the magnet is moved in the opposite direction, the deflection is in the opposite direction. Moving the wire or moving the coil has the same effect as both cuts the magnetic field of line. And when the wire is connected to a bulb, the bulb will light up. And this is what is generator effect. So generator effect is generating electricity using magnetism. 
by cutting the magnetic fields of line and doing electromagnetic induction. Now let's see how we use that in an alternating current generator. So in an alternating current generator, we have a magnetic field. We place a coil inside the magnetic field and we connect it to the split slip rings. Now you can see that for the top slip ring, one end of the coil is connected and to the bottom, the other coil is connected. Now what will happen when this coil rotates and the split ring will be rotating it, when this coil is rotating, it will cut the magnetic fields of line and it will be generating an alternating current. So we will see a graph like this. We will see a high voltage, then voltage coming to zero, then a low voltage, high voltage in the opposite direction and the voltage coming to zero. The voltage will be zero when the coil is perpendicular to the magnetic field. Okay, and when the coil is parallel to the magnetic field, we see the maximum voltage. So when the coil is parallel in the magnetic field, we see the maximum voltage. And when the coil is in the opposite direction, but still parallel, we will see the maximum voltage in the reverse direction. So you should be able to draw this setup, know the function of each of the component, and should be able to explain this graph why we are getting the peak and why we are getting a zero voltage. So in an alternating current generator, a coil is rotated in a magnetic field. The rotating coil cuts the magnetic fields of line and produces an electric current through electromagnetic induction. You have the slip rings that allow the coil to swing slow, easily, and you have the brushes which allow current to flow from the split rings. And the voltage is zero as a coil is perpendicular to the direction of magnetic field, and the voltage is maximum as a coil is parallel to the direction of the magnetic field. Now let's see a dynamo. A dynamo is a direct current generator where you have the north and the south pole and the coil which is connected just to the split ring commute and you have a voltmeter. So a motor has a slip ring commutator instead of slip ring. So due to this commutator, the current is not reversed. So it gives a DC current just in one direction. And that's what is a dynamo. Now you can use this electromagnetic induction in the microphones and the loudspeakers. So you can see this uh, setup of a loudspeaker. There's a permanent magnet and there's a paper cone which is a coil of wire which is like an electromagnet and an alternating current passed to it. So current is switched on and it generates a magnetic field which interacts with the permanent magnetic field and produces a force and when the current reverses the direction, the direction of the force also reverses so that can generate the sound waves. Okay, so now the last thing we need to do is what is a transformers. Now, transformers is a device which is used to increase or decrease the voltage of the potential difference. To increase the voltage, we have the step-up transformer. And to decrease the voltage, we have the step-down transformer. Now, what we have in a, a transformer, we have an iron core. And on this iron core, the coil is found. And we have a primary coil and the secondary coil. The primary coil is connected to an alternating current. Remember, transformers works in the alternating current because the varying alternating current, the varying current will produce a different magnetic field. Now, understand the principle. This is very important. The primary coil is connected to an alternating current supply, which is an input voltage. Changing the electric current in the primary coil creates a magnetic field. And the changing magnetic field, when it cuts the secondary coil, it produces a voltage. And that's what our principle is, that we give an input voltage and we get the output voltage. We need more output voltage. That is the step up transformer. We increase the coils of the secondary. If we need less, that means we need to do a step down transformer. We will decrease the coils of the secondary. So you need to do the transformer calculation. Voltage in primary over voltage in secondary is a 
is equal to the number of turns of primary over number of turns of secondary. The power across primary is calculated by voltage across primary times current across primary. And power across secondary is calculated as voltage across secondary times current across secondary. And as per transformer efficiency, if it's 100% uh, efficient, then the power in primary and secondary is same. So we equate the two. Now let's see what kind of a maths question can come according to uh, using this formula. So if the number of turns in primary is 20, that is NP is 20 and input voltage is 230, that is VP is 230. What are the numbers of turns in secondary, that is NS you need to calculate when the voltage in secondary is 460 volts. So we'll write this like this and use this expression. VP over VS is NP over NS. So NS would be NP times VS over VP. So that is 20 times 460 divided by 230. It means there are 40 turns in the secondary coil. Now, next question is a transformer's input voltage is 230 volts and the current is 20 amps. What is the output voltage if the output current is 10 amps? So we'll use the transformer efficiency expression. VP is 230, IP is 20, VS we have to find, IS is 10 amps. So we'll do VP times IP is VS times IS. So we'll rearrange this equation. VP times IP is 230 times 20 divided by IS, which is 10, gives 460 volts as the output voltage. Okay, so they can there could be different questions asked. They can ask you to find the voltage across primary, secondary, or the number of turns, or the power. So make sure you remember these expressions and how to use them. Okay, so now what's a national grid? So in a national grid, we have a power station. Power station is connected to a step-up transformer. Now you need to remember why we use a step-up transformer for transmission, because increasing the voltage for transmission increases the voltage and decreases the current. Now current causes heating effect and it can cause loss of energy. So high current causes heating and result in loss of energy. So by increasing the voltage and lowering the current, you can prevent the energy loss. So the transmission is efficient. And before the energy reaches the house, we use a step-down transformer to bring it down to 230 volts so that it can be, it is safe to use in the homes. So for transmission, we take a high voltage and a low current, but inside the home supply, we need the low voltage and the high current. So therefore, we have two types of transformers, and now we're doing the difference between them. Make sure you remember them. Step of transformers is used to increase the voltage. Step-down transformers is used to decrease the voltage. Step up transformer has more turns in secondary than primary. Step down has more turns in primary than secondary. Now in the step up transformer, voltage in secondary is greater. So IS times NS is greater. And in the step down, voltage in secondary is lower. So IS times NS is lower than the primary. The step up transformers is connected next to the power station to transmit high voltage to reduce the heating effects of current to tra during transmission. And step down transformer is connected to the lower power supply before it reaches home to reduce the voltage to 230 volts. Okay, so I hope this concept is clear to you that you should be able to define these terms. Magnet, magnetic fields of lines, induced magnetism, north pole, south pole, solenoids, electromagnets, relays, circuit breakers, electric bell, motor effects, Fleming's left hand rule, magnetic flux densities, flickering commutator, electromagnetic induction, generator effect, alternator, dynamo, transformer, step up transformer, step up transformer, transformer efficiency, and national grid. Have a pause of this video, try these questions. If you still have any problem, do watch the video again. So now, as always, our next step, check the specification, make sure everything which is in the specification is crystal clear to you. Do exam questions on this topic can be found on my website. The link is shared in the description box below. If you like this video, then do subscribe to the channel and do click the bell icon next to it so that you're notified as soon as I put a new video. And if there's any specific topic you want me to put a video on, leave a comment below and I'll make sure I'll have that up and running before your next exam. Okay, so I'll see you next in the next video. Till then, happy revising.